That melted plug is no joke. I almost burned the house down while I was mining cryptocurrency. Mining requires a lot of power. Where there's power, there's also heat. I mined crypto seriously for over a year, starting out with a single graphics card in my desktop computer, expanding to seven cards and eight ASICs. Now it's more difficult than ever to get your piece of the pie. It's a game of cheap electricity, hashing power, and capital investment. Before you go starting up your own farm, let me tell you a story about my experience. First, as long as you can cover your electrical bill and your operating costs, that's extra profit in your pocket every month. Two, it's simple enough to get started. We began with a single graphics card in my desktop computer. Your crypto wallets and your crypto pool accounts are easy enough to set up. You can be up and running in minutes. So we started mining on my desktop. Graphics cards are a great starting point. They're common, easy to work with, and they don't consume a lot of power. You can't mine Ethereum anymore, they transferred over to proof of stake, but there are plenty of alternatives. Running a single card in your PC is not going to impact your electricity bill in any significant way. The cost to run 7 graphics cards per month was only about 80 Canadian dollars. So I downloaded Gminer, pointed it to Ethermine, and started mining Ethereum. I'm sure we all remember the great GPU shortage. I picked up a 3070 Ti, a 3070, two used 1080s, and I added my friend's 3070 to the pool as well. We bought a wire rack to mount everything to, and some riser cables for the junk PC I had laying around. We started to run into power constraints, so we picked up a 1200 watt power supply from the mining profits we had so far. The total power consumption for that rig, we had 955 watts in graphics cards, we had 50 watts in headroom for the computer and the monitor, we had an 80 watt exhaust fan in the window, and we had a 100 watt cooling fan to blow air on the rest of the cards. We ran all of that on a single circuit in our home office. It was a 15 amp circuit at 120 volts volts, meaning we had 1800 watts available on the circuit. So up here, residential breakers are only good for about 80% constant load, meaning that we had 1440 watts that we could safely use. Our equipment total for that room was 1185 watts, well under the 1440. Regardless of the math, we still melted the plug. And no, we didn't overload the receptacle. The only thing that was plugged into it was the small 80 watt exhaust fan. We got it replaced. We didn't burn the house down. Everything was fine after that. We kept all the graphics cards running until September 2022 when the Ethereum merge happened. At that point, we shut everything off. Next, we bought a Bobcat 300. These are small specialty miners designed to give internet access to certain IoT devices. IoT meaning Internet of Things, think smart appliances, smart switches, and other smart equipment. Basically, they wanted to create one giant hotspot, and they paid us, the miners, to do it. We ordered the device in April 2021 for 600 US dollars. It arrived shortly after in August. It looks like a little Wi-Fi router, draws next to no power, and generates next to no heat. The only upgrade we did was a bigger antenna so we could communicate further out. I had to climb up onto the roof and bolt it to the side of the house. Please wear your safety equipment. This one was so successful it paid itself off in the first month and a half. It's super low maintenance, really a set it and forget it kind of device. A number of exchanges started delisting the coin due to questions about the project and its management. At the end of the day, the project never really recovered. While this was all going on, we were also building out the ASIC farm. ASICs are application specific integrated circuits and they do one thing and one thing only, mine crypto. We started off small with an Antminer L3 Plus and L3 Plus Plus, later adding a couple of InnoSilicon A4 Pluses to the pool. Those machines all mine the script algorithm, which is primarily Litecoin and Doge. We also added an Antminer Z11 to the pool. That mines Equihash, primarily Zencoin. These machines are loud. If you've ever heard a server spin up like this, they sound like that constantly. They're also extremely hot like hairdryer hot. They will overheat and shut off if you don't have proper ventilation. ASIC miners drink power. You need to factor in your electrical headroom before you start buying any. So to solve all these problems, we constructed a massive cabinet in the garage to run all these miners. We had dual ethernet for connectivity, three layers of drywall and soundproof insulation to help keep the noise down. We also wired it for 60 amps of power at 240 volts to keep up with the power drop. We did call about having another 200 amp service run. It was gonna cost us 20,000 Canadian dollars, so we didn't bother. The cabinet had a raised base with a hole on the floor so it could bring fresh air in. We ran a six inch and an eight inch exhaust fan up top that changed the air in the box about every six seconds. We had a 14 inch intake fan at the bottom of the door to help force fresh air in. We also had a six inch intake in the side of the garage to bring fresh cold air from outside. I also made a homebrew temperature sensor so we could get real time updates from inside the box. So with all that being built, we had solved our power and ventilation issues for now. Something else to note, all of these miners require constant maintenance and troubleshooting. There's random restarts, overheats, poor connections, faulty hashboards. 
you will spend a very significant amount of time trying to keep everything up and running. We actually had to sell off one of the A4 Pluses for parts because it just did not want to cooperate. So at this point, we've been stable for a little while and we wanted to expand. So we picked up three of B Computing's B2S miners. These things were massive at 2,900 watts of power drop per box. We had issues with one of those units as well. I come to find out that the power supply had just straight died. This was more troubleshooting, more money, more downtime. While we were waiting for a new power supply for one of the units, we shipped the other two off to a co-hosting location. I would really recommend sending your units off to a co-hosting location if you don't have the infrastructure prepared yourself. At this point, all the coins were starting to pull back from their all-time highs, which means that our profitability tanked and we were running at a loss. So we slowly started to shut everything down and selling off the miners we had. There was a time where it made sense to do crypto mining, but I think those days are pretty much behind me. Our Ethereum farm, we made 2.6 Ethereum. So profit minus costs, we walked away with $1,214. Next, we've got the Bobcat miner. The estimated profit on that one is 600 US dollars. The ASIC farm, the really big one. When we turned everything off at the end of September, the coin we had mined was worth approximately 5,000 US dollars. At today's price, everything that we had mined was worth about 14,000 US dollars. At the end of the day, I think that we just didn't recoup our initial investment, so we're really just out the cost of the hardware. So that about sums up my experience with crypto mining. Anyway, I hope this was insightful. Thanks so much, and as always, we'll see you in the next one.